Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel a little out of practice today because I've not actually filmed a sit down video like this for like, I think probably four weeks because I've been doing lots of vlogs. I've done like get ready with me's this month. So yeah, it's been a while since I've done something like this. It's weird how quickly you get out of practice of like sitting with a camera on a tripod and talking to yourself. I think I've definitely got more comfortable vlogging this month. But if you have missed the vlogs I've done this month, Definitely um, check back on my last videos if you're not already subscribed, have a look at what I've been posting because this month has been like vlog and adventure filled and we have a lot more vlogs and adventures to come as well. I know you guys are really enjoying them which just makes me so happy because they're probably my favourite videos to do. So it's great to see you're enjoying them and lots more are coming so keep an eye out for more travel vlogs, more London vlogs, lifestyle vlogs, all that kind of good stuff. But today I'm going to be sharing with you my September favourite. So what I've been loving lately, we're going to have quite a few fashion items this month because I have been doing some shopping. I mean, you guys, are you fed up of hearing everyone say the word transitional? It is all over social media right now. But transitional outfits and clothing are really popular. So obviously I've been picking up some bits. I'm also really trying hard not to buy too much because I know we all do this but over the last few years I've gotten into a really bad habit of buying clothes thinking that they were my style and I would wear them and actually they weren't and I didn't wear them and it was a waste of money and a waste of clothes so I'm really thinking carefully through my purchases this month but I think the, the, the clothing pieces I've picked up I'm loving so let's get straight into it if you want to see what I've been loving this month as we've got fashion favorites we've also got accessories all good stuff stay tuned. I think you're gonna like this one because I have a lot to talk about. First up I feel like I should just mention this elephant in the room which is my very bold jumper. This is from the JW Anderson Uniqlo collection that came out this month. Um, if you saw me and Alan and my boyfriend do a wish list video you would have seen us mention this collaboration that we were both so excited about because we're both really big fans of JW Anderson. He's a British designer and we both love his clothes and his, clothes and his accessories for men and women. So when he collaborated with Uniqlo, we were really excited because it's a far more affordable way to kind of get involved and invest in his kind of designs and his pieces. So the first thing I picked up in the collection is this jumper. This is one of the most statement things I now own. And I think a lot of people probably did gravitate towards this jumper. Alan ended up getting the same one, even though initially he wasn't keen on this, but when he saw it in person, he really liked it. I knew as soon as I saw the kind of pictures of the collaboration before it was even out that this jumper is something that I would be getting. Um, it's really oversized, I got a size large and it's just multicolored with a big blue kind of bold blue collar um, like a polo neck. It's super soft, super loose and baggy and yeah it's just a real statement. These stripes are quite iconic for JW Anderson so it was really cool to see him incorporate that into the Uniqlo collection and because I liked it so much I'd seen in the campaign um, pictures they had paired this jumper with the Uniqlo coloured, um, not Uniqlo, JW Anderson striped um, scarf. So this is also from the Uniqlo collection. And of course I'll wear these separately, but I think together when you're just, it, you're not ready for a coat, but you want a jumper and a little bit more of a layer. I think these look really cool together. I know this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but this is how they kind of advertised these items. I've just put this on loosely like this. I think that's really cool. It's so over the top, so obnoxious, so ridiculous, almost clown-like. I'm looking in my mirror. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, this is cool. Um, so yeah, I know this is quite a statement, but I really, really like it. I've not done this scarf properly at all. But I like how ridiculous it is. And as I said, I can wear this scarf separately. It's really nice. Um, it's from, what's really cool actually about this collection is that you get the like heat tech technology that Uniqlo offers. So they're really good with like winter warmers. And there's even heat tech in this jumper and in the scarf. And then you get the design of JW Anderson, which I think is really cool. And the scarf's really warm. The label looks like this. So it just says, JW Anderson and then it's got the Uniqlo logo next to it. So both their logos are incorporated, incorporated, corp, incorporated there we go, into the logo, the label, which is cool. And yeah, I just really like it. So these are two bits I picked up. I also picked up a pair of trousers, which I need to get tailored. So I'm not going to show you them today, but I'm sure that they will appear very soon. They're very wide legged kind of pinstripe trousers from the collection. And those are the three pieces I picked up. I'm loving them. Oh, I'm getting quite hot in this scarf now because even though I'm saying we're transitioning into the next season, we're having a hot day in London today. It's like 21 degrees, which I know to a lot of you is not hot, but it's hot considering it's 
basically October, you know. So yeah, those are the bits I've been knowing from the JW Anderson collection and I'm kind of disappointed that so many people have picked this jumper up because I was hoping it was going to be so bold no one would get it but that was silly because it's like iconic for JW Anderson of course people would get it so I'm just hoping I don't run into anyone wearing it at the same time because that could be a bit like embarrassing although we can just laugh it off but you know when you see people wearing what you're wearing and you're like oh no I thought I was so cool and unique and we look exactly the same that happened to me a lot last year so I'm really trying to not buy into too many hyped items but this is definitely hyped and I fell straight in for it I just I love it so another item I picked up for the new season that I've been loving already gotten so much wear out of this is this checked um blazer from uh anthropology I told him how to practice guys I can't even think how to speak but this is from anthropology this is an oversized blazer it's so oversized that I got a small so if you are thinking to get this online just bear in mind maybe size down a size um initially want it to look really oversized this still looks quite oversized on me though in a small so that's something to bear in mind but then I am also short so it's quite long on me if you were taller than I think maybe 5'5 five, five, this would kind of sit at your hip level whereas this sits below my kind of crotch area for me because I am small I should have just said it sits lower than my bum that would sound way better but anyway I really like this from anthropology as I mentioned um really cool to style over a t-shirt at the moment as we are transitioning into the next season with jeans or with trousers but then in the winter you could also wear it with like a polo neck underneath jumpers so yeah really really diverse really on trend these blazers you guys would have seen them everywhere by now um men's tailoring is a huge um trend for the next season and after we've just had like fashion weeks and stuff as well for spring summer 18 i've noticed that that men's cut men's tailoring is not going anywhere so i think it's here to stay for this season and the next season so if you did want to invest in a jacket like this i think it would be worth it because it looks like it's going to be the trend is going to be around for a while and even not even talking about trends i love men's fashion i love men's tailoring that's something that i've loved for years whether it's on trend or not it's just like a bonus to be kind of seeing it being made and created more but i think this is something that would last me a few years even longer you know it's never going to be not good to have a blazer in your wardrobe um and i think this one's really cool because it's got like a green line to it and i haven't seen anyone wearing this one from anthropology which i'm really glad about because i've been trying not to shop in high street stores like Zara and even Topshop as much lately for kind of bold items like this, statement pieces, because you see them everywhere. Like I'm definitely going to see people wearing this jumper, it's a statement piece from the high street. But yeah, I haven't seen anyone wearing this one from Anthropology, so hoping I'm going to get in luck there. But because Anthropology I think is a bit more high end high street, I mean it's not like All Saints but it's not Zara, like this was £128, which I think is quite a substantial amount. Um, but again, I just think it's something that hopefully will last me years. And yeah, I really like it. The next clothing item I have been living in because it's been so comfortable is one I can't show you right now because I've just put it in the wash this morning, but it's a mustard yellow colored hoodie from And Other Stories. This jumper gets me so many compliments from you guys, like when I've worn it in previous videos and when I've posted pictures of me wearing it on Instagram, you guys always leave me the nicest comments, such positive feedback, just saying how much that colour works for me, which is really nice to hear because I'm really, I've definitely gotten into colour, I mean you can tell by this jumper I'm wearing, which is crazy because this time last year I think I was still wearing all black all the time and now the only time I ever wear all black is when I go to work and even then I'll pair it up with like... I don't know I'll try and like put some color somewhere but yeah if I wear all black now it's really only at work although for the winter I think I will start wearing black again but maybe more in a men's tailored kind of way like a really structured black trouser with like a black t-shirt or sweater and then a really big overcoat so kind of taking it that men's androgynous style rather than just wearing black skinny jeans and a black jump which is what I used to live in um, I think that was like my in-between, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I know I don't want to do this stage of my wardrobe. Whereas now, yeah, I just love colour. So that, um, that really was a tangent. That's my mustard yellow jumper that I have been loving. It's really, really cosy. I've also been asked sizing on this. I think I got the second largest size in that. It is very big and boxy. So I think you could probably just go true to size in that one, actually. I think that probably is true to size. 
Um, okay, what else have I been loving? I've got a list here. Oh, my earrings. I got into earrings again this month. I haven't worn earrings in about eight years. Um, also guys I need to apologise for my nails, I just painted them this morning and I've still got like, the, you know when you get some nail polish outside of your, on your finger, I need to take that off. But I wanted to get this video done for you guys so that it would be up before October, so I'm sure you don't mind that. But my earrings, back onto my earrings, um, first up I bought this pair which I've put in my second hole, so I also reopened my holes. Um, because they closed because I haven't worn earrings in so long. So the first pair I bought was this kind of like circular round pair from COS. I've been wearing these actually in my vlogs recently and a lot of you asked where they were from so they're from COS. Also guys I always put links in the description box below for things I'm talking about so you can kind of see more about it or if you wanted to buy it yourself you can see how much it is, see where it's from, that kind of thing. Um, some or most of the links will be affiliate links which means that if you do choose to shop from that link I make a small like commission from forwarding you onto that sale I guess is how you would explain it but you don't have to shop from those links you can just find that information from them I always fill my description box with loads of stuff so always feel free to check it out and as I said if you don't want to buy from those links you don't have to but it's an option if you do so these ones are from COS £12 great price and these got me back into earrings because I hadn't seen a style of earrings I liked in ages I'm really liking how loads of people are wearing um, hoops now and I didn't think hoops would suit me, so this was a good starting point for me. Once I got these from Cos though, as I said, £12 for both of them, I knew I wanted a second pair because I was getting really into it. So then I picked up these, which are these hoops from a shop in Amsterdam called Hut Spot, so it's a concept store. Um, I can't remember what the brand of these is, guys. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to see if I can find them online or something similar. But it's basically like a really thin hoop with like a dangly... One has a dangly hexagon on it and one has a dangly rectangle. And I got them mixed matched. You buy them one each. So they come as separates and then you can buy as many as you want. And they were 25 euros each. So these were much pricier, but I've been wearing them a lot. So I'm glad to have spent the money on them because I really do like them. I'm getting a lot of wear out of them. Something to mention though, that is oh, it's so frustrating about these earrings. They are so hard to do up. So it's like a continuous circle. So you have to link the bit you put through your ear into like a tiny little hole on the other side of the earring. I'm not even joking, it took me two days to get both of these earrings in. It took me an hour to get the first earring in and then I couldn't get the second one in. I ended up going out with just one earring because I didn't have time to put this one in. And then the next day I was like, okay, I'm determined to get it in. And I think it took like half an hour to get that one done up. I could get them in, I just couldn't get it done up. And that was a week ago and I've not taken them out since because I'm traumatised and I feel like after two days trying on and off to get them in, I'm never taking them out. I'm gonna have to take them out eventually because I want to try new earrings, but I don't know guys. The bane of my life, these earrings, although they do look nice. Um, so yeah, got back into earrings this month, which is nice, always fun. I think now actually for my second hole, I'm not gonna keep this ring here. I think I'm actually gonna um, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see. Oh, that's probably better. Um, I don't think I'm going to keep this cos hoop in my second hole. I kind of like how it looks, but I was thinking to get a stud. Um, I just don't really know where to get a stud from yet. I'm still hunting down the perfect stud. Okay, next up, now we've talked fashion, let's talk um, perfume. I picked up the Tokyo exclusive from Lalabo Gaik 10. This is such a light fragrance. You would have to get really close to someone to be able to smell it. I think it's kind of like a really light, musky, smoky fragrance. I don't know if it's got like geranium or something in it. I'm not sure, but there is something that gives it a lift. So it is very fresh. It's not dark or deep and it's very fresh and very light. You have to put a lot of this on to really be able to smell it for a few hours. It is a completely lightweight perfume, but I fell in love with how it smelt and I don't know guys. I just, I was thinking I shouldn't get it because it's not very it just doesn't last very well compared to other Lalaba perfumes but you know when you're thinking like well I just love something so I'm not going to think sensibly and I'm just going to treat myself and I haven't regretted it which has been good um so yeah I really like this one it's very very light if you wanted a very light everyday scent that is really unique because I've never smelled anyone wearing this and I've never come any across anyone I've met who's been wearing it either this is going to be a unique one you should try however you're not going to be able to get it unless you go to Tokyo or you wait until next September because the city exclusives from Lalabo are only available in September. 
unless you go to the city it's from. Um, but a cool fact I didn't know is that if you have the bottle of a city exclusive and it runs out, you can top it up any time of the year, which is great. So if I ran out of this by like, I don't know, December or January, I wouldn't have to wait until next September to get a new one. I could just take my bottle to the Labo and pay to have it topped up any time of the year. Love that, I think that's great. Also, it would mean that if you bought a few city exclusives, you could always top them up. Okay, next up, if you follow my Instagram, you'll notice I've got really, really into my photography over the past month, and I think I've, I've always been really interested in photography. Like, when I was younger, I would always get a camera for Christmas, and I just didn't really, I think I knew I wanted to take pictures. I've always loved photography. I've always loved capturing moments through photography and trying to be creative with it as well. But when I was younger, I think I really struggled to have confidence to really push myself with that and to know what to do, whereas now, I definitely feel more confident with it and so I'm really ready to start playing around with photography more and really expanding my knowledge on it and my skill. Um, so I picked up this camera recently, which originally I was just picking up this camera because I thought it would be great for the quality of my street style photography I've been doing. So if you didn't know, I have a second Instagram account called Seen on the Street, where if I see someone walking down the street who I think has got a certain pinaz about them or really cool individual style, I'll ask to take their picture for my Instagram. So far we've had quite a few people say yes, I think we probably have like nine or so pictures on the Instagram so we're building it up slowly it's still very early on if you did want to see that I'll put a link in the description box for my street style Instagram and also for my personal Instagram but this camera has been so much more than what I thought it would be it's really um got me knee deep into a photography hobby again which I just love like I'm constantly when I'm not at work and even on my lunch break I'm constantly thinking that I want to go out and take pictures and I've started even taking this in my bag with me to work so that on my lunch break I can kind of walk around and see what I find it's a really good way to kind of be creative in the day as well when I feel sometimes quite stifled just sitting at my desk it gives me that outlet midday which I love but this camera is the Fujifilm X100F. It doesn't come cheap, it was £1200, but the website I got it from does have a five year warranty, so if anything did go wrong with the camera, I am looked after for five years, which I think is really good. Um, the quality on this is outstanding. It has different dials on it that you can play around with, and you can really be creative with your photography. It's also really light and compact. It kind of looks like an old school film camera, so people aren't really that intimidated when you have it kind of in their face and you're using it on the streets. The only thing with this camera is you can't change the lens, although it's a pretty basic lens, it's a 23mm. Um, so it's a pretty good lens and I don't think I'm going to miss being able to change the lens. I also have my Sony, which I'm filming on right now, this is the Sony A7 Mark II that I'm filming on right now and that does have interchangeable lenses. I'm filming on a 35mm lens which basically a 35mm lens I personally think is my favourite because it kind of shows through the camera how you would see it by eye. So you know when you see like a, f a view when you're away or when you're walking down the street and you think oh, I want to take a picture of that and you take a picture and it kind of looks way further away than it did by your eye. I hate that. I like photography to be like exactly what I saw so the 35mm that you're watching this video on does that. It basically shows it exactly as it would be if you were standing right there in front of me, which I really like. So the 23mm is not hugely different to that. Um, if you guys aren't interested in photography, is this extremely boring? I don't know. But Alan picked up a Fujifilm, I think his is the X-T2. He has been vlogging on that and it has lenses that you can change and he's been doing photography with it and it has completely changed the quality of his content. If you want to see how that camera is, I would say go over to Alan's channel. If you're new around here, Alan's my boyfriend. I'll, I'll have to link his channel below um, for you guys to check out because he also did a Paris vlog recently and you can really see how amazing the quality of these cameras are because they're very, very similar. Apart from his is just that one step up, you can change the lenses and you can do a few more things on it. But if you're looking for a camera mainly for um, you know, photography and starting to get into photography, I would really recommend this. I absolutely love this camera and it has completely changed uh, my Instagram as well. I feel like my Instagram is just looking beautiful lately. If I do toot my own horn, I am so proud of my Instagram and I'm really excited for you guys to see some photographs I've got coming up soon as well. I've been putting a lot of time into my Instagram and I think it's paying off and I think you guys are enjoying the pictures as well, which is very rewarding. 
Okay guys, so I think I'll call it an end there for my September favourites. I do have a few other bits I've been loving, but we're going to be here all day. Um, I'm sure if you've watched my vlogs or upcoming vlogs, you'll kind of see what I've been wearing, what I've been loving lately, and more things like that. Still absolutely addicted to travel and just experiencing things. I think my favourite things now, I always find the most reward from experiences. And that's just such a cliche millennial thing to say, but I'm really getting into traveling and, and just getting out there and doing things rather than shopping. But I am also enjoying really evolving my style right now. Since my haircut, I feel like I've really found my core style lately. And yeah, it's all thanks to the haircut, which is, it grows so fast and I need to get it cut again, as always. It's like every like five weeks it's overgrown and I need to cut it shorter again. But yeah. That is my update. I don't know what that noise was. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to call it a wrap. Otherwise, I will be here talking to you all day. If you have any video requests, please leave them in the comments below so I know what you guys want to see next. I will get on to those. And let me know as well what your favourites have been this month. I always love hearing from you guys. We can have a little chat about what we've been loving lately in the comments below. So I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys.